Oh yeah, what's up guys? This is Curse Pike. My friends call me Big C. I'm back in action today. I'm going to show you how to create a thumbnail, a YouTube thumbnail, for free using Photopea or Photopea, depending on how you want to pronounce it. This is free photo editing software, and this is part of our commitment at Freedom to help you become the best video editor you know using free tools. Everything we teach you is free, so it's going to cost you nothing to get started on YouTube. All right. You'll see here that I've got an Elden Ring Let's Play number one here, background thing going on with an Elden Ring background blurred out. We've got like an, a logo on the bottom right. Basically, this is a pretty good, but not a, you know, it's not going to win an award, but it's a good, you know, YouTube thumbnail, and I'm going to show you how to recreate it for free. So let's get started. The first step here is I've got Photopea.com open, but in order to create a new uh, Photopea, I'm going to go ahead and hit this plus button. When I do that, I'm going to click here, Photopea. Dot com. We're going to go to photopea.com and presto, this is what you're going to see. The next step, if you're following along, is you want to click on new project. And when you do that, you're going to see a whole bunch of templates on the right side, which you can scroll through. We're not going to use any of the templates in this image or in this video, pardon me, but just keep in mind that they are there and you can scroll through them if you want to. But what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a new project. So I'm going to type in Elden Ring Let's Play. Two. I don't know, something like that, okay? The width is defaults to 1280 by 720, which is acceptable for YouTube, but I prefer to use the wider size, so I go with 1920 by 1080. This is just because my screenshot is 1920 by 1080, so it's just nice and easy. So I'm gonna left double, I'm gonna left click on this FB event image, which means Facebook event image, but that doesn't matter what it says. What matters is, is 1920 by 1080, which is 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is what we want. Left click on create and presto, we've got an artboard with a nice white background. We are on our way. The next step, if you're following along guys, is I'm gonna drag and drop our background image onto this. So I've got it in, I'm using a map for, my, for this video here. So I'm gonna left click on finder and I'm gonna select this image. If you look at this image, it says 1920 by 1080, so we know it's the perfect size. So I'm gonna left click on it, drag and drop it on and presto perfect you're gonna see these little bounding boxes so I can make it bigger or smaller if I needed to let me show you what that looks like if I wanted like if I really wanted this guy in the middle here to be like a big part of the, the background image I can go ahead and adjust that but for this one I'm just gonna leave it as is but just keep in mind that you can go ahead and make that changes once you've got the image placed and you know and you like where it is right click on enter and that will place the image. Also keep in mind that I clicked on Finder, but if you're on a PC, you can click in Windows Explorer and it does the exact same thing, it's all good. All right, so we've got our background image, we are on our way. The next step is we wanna add in the text. So I'm gonna go ahead over to the left side here and I'm gonna click on this T, which is really a text tool, or they call it a type tool, and presto, we've selected it, and we're going to go ahead and start typing. So we want to type in Elden Ring Let's Play, number one, something like that. So I'm just going to click here in the middle, and it's not going to look correct at the beginning, but we're going to fix it. So I'm going to left click, and then I'm going to type in Elden Ring Let's Play, number one. And you don't see any of it, and that is an issue, but here's the issue. It is in black type, or it's in black font. So you'll see here, when I go to the top up here, you'll see that it's selected as black or close to black. It's a charcoal and it's a very small font. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just click outside of it and show you a few things. First off, it's created its own layer. If we go to the layer panel here, you're gonna see there's three layers. There's the background layer, and then there's a layer on top of it, which is the image. And then there's this here little fancy text, which is completely wrong font and all that other stuff. Let's go ahead and fix it. So I'm gonna double click on the T and what happens is this means you're selecting everything that you've typed or you, all of your text. The first step is we want to change the color and the way to do that is to click on this little rectangle here. This allows you to change the color of your type or the color of your text. I'm going to left click on it and we're going to set it to pure white because that way we can see it. And then so I've moved this circle from its original color down here someplace up to white. So we just move that to the top and presto. The text will be white and you won't see it yet, but when I click the tool and I click out, you'll see bang, now it is white. Let's go ahead and make some more changes. I'm gonna double click on it again. And this time, we're gonna to go to the font size. 
So I'm going to go up to this little chevron or this downward triangle, and we're going to change it from 24 pixels to a lot bigger. So let's go to something like 150. Let's go all the way, guys. Why not? Send it, right? Isn't that what we say now? All right, cool. So we've changed the font size. Now I'm going to click out. I'm going to click on my Move tool again, and we're going to see, oh, this is looking pretty good. I'm now going to click on it and move it into the middle. All right, looking good, guys. Still not what we had in the last one, but I'm going to show you a few more techniques while I got you without hopefully boring you. I'm going to double click on it again, and now I'm going to go ahead and place my font or my cursor in the middle here, and I'm going to hit enter. So now they're on two different levels. So now we've got a top line and a bottom line, and they are not centered correctly. We're going to fix that. So I'm just going to move this. I'm going to select the move tool again. And I'm just going to move it into the center here. You're going to see a red line. And when you see that red line, that means it's in the exact center. But you will notice that these paragraph or the, the uh, text is not really center aligned. It's left aligned here. So we want to make it centered. So what are we going to do? Let's learn a new technique. I'm going to double click on it again as we're doing. And let's go ahead and click on this bad boy right here. You'll see it says paragraph. It's kind of weird looking P, but it's a paragraph. And when you click on, there's character and paragraph. When you're on paragraph, instead of left aligned here, let's click on this one here. This is going to center align it, but it's also going to shoot it to the left. So that's okay. So we've gone ahead and selected that, and it's centered align. Let's close it, and bang. Let's go back over here to the Move tool, and we're going to move it now back into the center. And when we see the red line, it'll snap. Now, you also are going to see here, when I double-click on it, that we are using a font called Luckiest Guy. That is not the font that it defaults to. If you want to change your font, and I recommend you do, just click on this and scroll through here. And you can just see here, there's all these cool different fonts. I like the Luckiest Guy, it's got a cool look to it, but um, again, you're not restricted to anything. If you see a font that you really, really like, for example, I don't know, let's see if there's something really cool. Membra, what the heck is that? Okay, let's go with that. See what that looks like. I'm going to just click on the tool. Whoa, hello. Okay, this is some sort of line art type font. Um, but just keep in mind, you can change that. So I'm going to double click on it again. And I'm going to go back to Luckiest Guy. So what is it? Let's go up, up, up. L-U-C. There we go. But I want you to know that that is available to you for changing fonts. So again, just another technique that we've learned. Okay, guys, we're still on our way. But now you're going to notice here and that the other one over here the background is blurred and this is a little bit, this has got a cool, neat effect where it's got a black outline and a little bit of a shadow to give it depth. And this one doesn't have that yet. So let's just go ahead and add some production value. The first step is on Elden Ring here. I've now taken my off of the top layer. We're going down to the middle layer, which is the image. We're going to go ahead and add an effect to this. We're going to blur it. So you want to go up here to filter. And then you want to go to Blur, and then you want to select Gaussian Blur. Left click on that. And now you're going to see here that I've already got it pre-selected to the blur level that I like. But, you know, if you want it really blurry, if you've been drinking, or if you want a lighter blur, go ahead and just dial this in as you see fit. Let's go with something like, uh, something like that. So you can tell it's an Elden Ring image, but it also allows you to have a high contrast. The blur brings out the text so you can read the text a little better. So let's go with a 6.8 blur. So what did we do? We added Gaussian blur to it. Okay, good, so we blurred out the image a bit. We've got a higher contrast ratio. We've got white against a darker background. We're looking pretty good here. Let's go back now. I'm gonna click off of this, so the background image is finished. Now let's go to the text again. I've selected the text, and we're gonna add an effect or two to it. We wanna get that black on the outside and a little bit of that cool look. So what I'm gonna do, is I've selected the text. I have not double clicked. I've just selected the layer and I'm going to go down to effect. Left click on effect and we're going to go ahead and add a stroke to the outside and it's going to look weird as heck on its original. So this looks kind of uh, generic, right? So we're going to go ahead and make some changes. So the first one is it's selected red as the original stroke color. We do not want red. We want black in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and go from red to black and then I'm going to left click on OK and I do that you're going to see it immediately show up. Excellent. Also it's defaulting here to three pixels. I don't know let's go a little over. let's go to eight pixels so you can really see it. Let's sell it for this video okay. 
This will show the technique a little bit better. Now, there are a whole bunch of options here, but some of the ones that I want to show you is drop shadow. If you like the drop shadow effect, it looks pretty cool. If you like the outer glow effect, it's very, very subtle and you can adjust it. But let's go ahead and look at, uh, let's go ahead and look at bevel and a boss. Is that the one we like? Yeah, that's the one I like. There we go. We beveled it and I'm an emboss. Okay, we've left clicked on bevel and emboss and this has added some depth to the text and it's given it a little bit. If we zoom in a little bit, you'll see here that it's given a little bit of a shadow and a shading to the inside of the uh, font. So it looks pretty good here. So we've gone ahead to bevel and emboss and when you left click on that, you're going to see here that there's a few different options. But let's go with the outer bevel. No, I don't like the outer bevel. We're going with the inner bevel. Looks good. So just leave it as is. We're going to go with a depth of 100% size. Let's go ahead and increase it a little bit. Let's go to size 15 pixels. Yeah, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, and if you don't know where the zoom key is, I'm using my uh, touchpad or my, key, my keypad. But if you don't have that, you can always use this tool right here. That's a zoom tool. And presto, we've gone ahead and that's maybe a little bit too much. Let's drop it down to about 12. Let's drop it to 10, 9 pixels. Yeah, that looks good. And presto, I'm going to left click on OK. And now you're going to see we've got a pretty cool looking text and it's pretty visible. It's against a pretty cool blurred background. Maybe we want to increase the size a little bit. I'm going to double click on it. And you're going to see the size button is stopped at 150. But you can dial it up. You could just either just scroll down and increase it to let's say 180. What do you think? 180? I like 180. Just type it in actually. This is the easiest way to do it. 180. Pixel. Presto. Done. Now, here we go. We've got Elden Ring. It's in the center. It's against the right background. We've blurred it. We've got a nice cool embeddable effect. We've got a neat little cool um, font that, you know, <laughs> you don't really use too often. Well, I don't remember what it's called. Luckiest Guy. That's the one. If you want to drag and drop your channel logo, go back into the Finder. I'm going to go ahead and go to the teaching one here. And this is the MGN logo that I'll use as an example. Gonna drag and drop that on top. Gonna go ahead and select the move tool, move it to the bottom here, and presto, and maybe let's increase the size. When I hover over the corners, you're gonna see that it goes double arrow. Let's go ahead and just increase it. I'm gonna hold down the shift key so that it increases in size proportionally, and presto. This is a very cool thumbnail that we used during Photopea. It didn't cost us a thing, and it looks like something I put on my channel. Thanks for watching this, guys. Ton more stuff coming up. Stay tuned. Be back soon.